Hi, Pete here from Club Engineer. In our previous talk through, we went to a lot of trouble to write a program that would read the values measured by the light sensor. This allowed us to create a spreadsheet that would calculate the turn thresholds when following the line, but also the threshold that we're going to use when we're detecting silver. We changed the line following program so that the main loop block exits when that silver threshold is reached. However, the program didn't appear to work. As you can see, the robot follows the line, but when it reaches silver, it appears to continue following the line. Or at least it starts going around in circles, and we figure it's trying to follow the line, but it can't find the black or the white. What could possibly be causing that? Let's have a close look at the single sensor line following program. We'll have a shot at executing the code in our head. We're going to run motor A backwards slowly. At the same time, we run motor C, a bit more power, forwards. Or the pseudocode until the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%. Turn right by stopping motor A well, we're no longer doing that because of the fine tuning we did and running motor C. Hmm. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn left by stopping motor C. Da 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 da. Hmm. Why isn't the program exiting when it sees silver? We've set it, to ex set it up to exit when the light sensor on port 1 reads greater than 73%. It takes a lot of looking at the program to work this out. But I tell you, the problem lies here in this weight block. Until the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%. So this part of the code here executes when the light sensor is over white. The program is waiting for it to see black. What happens if it never sees black? And it might not see black because the robot's moved from the white part of the tile straight over the silver. In which case, it's going to sit here forever. So here's the problem. If the robot is searching for the black line, it's never going to reach this light sensor. It's never going to check for silver. It's never going to exit the main loop program will hang here. What we've got to do is change this from using a weight block to something that's more responsive. Let's quickly retype the pseudocode. Until the light sensor on port 1, well instead of saying until the light sensor on port 1 sees black, let's say if the light sensor on port 1 sees white. That's kind of the reverse. If If the light sensor on port 1 sees white, so until it sees black, or if it sees white, they're the same thing but in reverse. If the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn right by stopping motor A and running motor C. Good. And we'll reverse the sense of this one too until the light sensor on port 1 sees uh, white. Well, we're going to change that to if the if the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%, turn left by stopping A, by stopping C and running A. All right, so far so good. I'm going to move this comment block down here. I'm going to get rid of this weight block and get rid of this weight block. Now, our pseudocode says if the light sensor, so we're going to use a switch block. Get this pseudocode moved up here nicely. Pseudocode move down here. 
if the light sensor, okay, that's set up to switch based on a touch sensor, we want a light sensor. If the light sensor on port 1 sees white or reads greater than 50%, turn right by stopping A and running C. Stopping A and running C. Remember, we're not actually stopping A, we're just running it really slowly in reverse. And down here, if the light sensor on port 1 sees black or reads less than 50%, turn left. Okay. All right, there's our finished program. We've uh, changed the sense of the program. So instead of uh, waiting for black, we're checking to see if it's white. They're the opposite of one another, but it'll have the same effect from the point of view of the line following. What it won't do, what the program won't do, is stop and wait on any given block. It will be much more responsive and it will be checking the light sensor both here and here very very quickly. Let's compile, download and run that program and see how it behaves. The robot's following the line, reaches the silver end and it appears to stop but it um, seems to roll through a bit. It stops and it, it's stopping on the green, that's interesting. It reaches the silver and it, it keeps, it kind of stops a little bit after the silver. I think we've seen that behaviour before, haven't we, when we were doing the stop on the line. And the piece that's missing uh, is, a, um, is a block to stop the motors. Because remember the command to stop the motors, if it's not explicitly issued, the program just terminates at the end of the uh, sequence beam and the motors take a while to run out. So what we need to do is stop the motors. Uh, motors A and C, a um, motor block or a move block and I set that to stop. We compile, download and run that. Moving along the line over the silver and it stops dead. Moving along the line it's over the silver and it stops dead. Excellent. Now the uh, only remaining thing to do is to piece the two bits of program that we've written together. The main line following program and the detect the can program. I'm going to open the find the can program, copy the code from the find the can program to the clipboard by selecting it with the mouse holding the left mouse button down, copy it to the clipboard with control C. I'm coming back to line following one sensor. I'm going to paste that code in with control V and then I'm going to grab it and move it all up onto the main sequence beam. I'm going to save this program now with a new name because it's now more than just uh, follow the line. I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to call it rescue-01 and click save. I'm going to compile, download and run. And we'll have a look at this program running. It navigates the sweeping bend goes round the square corner and it falls off at the square corner. Oh dear. What could be doing that? It falls off at the square corner. The program was working so well not so long ago. Well if a program suddenly stops working, one of the possible causes is that the lighting conditions have changed. Now when we first wrote our find the can program, we just guessed the light thresholds for following the line. And we set them at 50%. So if the light was regard if the light was greater than 50%, it 
We regarded it as on white, and if it was less than 50%, we regarded it as on black. We'll go back to our spreadsheet and double check the threshold. So the threshold between black and white that we're using for line salt following isn't actually 50, it's 56. So that could well be the problem. So we'll change this value here from 50 to 56. You better change it over here too for finding the can when it's looking for the edge of the green, 56. Compile, download and run. See how it looks. The robot navigates the sweeping bend. It approaches the square right angle bend gets round at this time, it approaches the harsher right angle bend, it gets round that too, it comes through the hairpin bend, it gets round that, it detects silver, it moves to the centre of the chemical spill and it starts searching for the can. And it looks like it's going to get it on this attempt. And bingo! Success. Our robot has navigated the course, detected silver, and found the can. Very satisfying that now we can get from the beginning of the course to the end of the course, passing over most of the simpler tiles. In the next talk through, we'll have a look at some of the more complex tiles, perhaps one of the physical barriers, like the water tower. Good luck with your implementation. The material we're covering in these talk-throughs is hard, and sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you may find that you're stuck. Often, it only takes a small amount of face-to-face -face help to get you back on track. If you think you'd benefit from face-to-face -face help, then open your web browser and type clubengineer.org help. You'll see a list of times and places where face-to-face -face help is available. At these sessions, you'll get all the help you need to get back on track. You may also meet like-minded young engineers such as yourself for collaborating on projects down the track. Face-to-face -face sessions are run over the school holidays and after school during term time. They're available for all ages from years 5 to year 12. We also run face-to-face -face sessions for teachers and mentors. We'd love to meet you at one of these sessions and learn what you have been building.